Hey everybody, Bentley here. In this video I want to talk to you about a program called Photoscape, which is an excellent program for manipulating graphics and playing around with photos and all these sorts of wonderful things. And what's great about Photoscape, of course, is, I mean, not only is it fantastic, but it is 100% free. So first of all, let's talk about actually having to uh, track down Photoscape and how to get it. Very, very easy. All you do is type in Photoscape into Google. And the first thing that comes up is photoscape.org. Now, I want to mention right off the bat, there are some you know, things you really need to watch out for when you are downloading it. Then when you first get to the website, you got to be careful about these banners that have these big download buttons on them. Those are advertisements. Those are not the actual program. And I mean, this is another one, prime example. It's kind of shady in a, in a lot of ways, but I guess when it comes down to it, these are people who are providing this awesome program for free. So they're finding other ways to kind of uh, pay for it, essentially. But what you want to do is come to the free download tab. You can see up here, you click free download. Again, watch out for the banners. Do not click any of these things. And you want to look for these guys down here. What they do is they have Photoscape downloadable on various software download sites. And these, these sites are reliable. You know, you're going to get a virus-free program. The problem is that the, each of these sites has their own set of banners and confusing um, advertisements as well. So you have to be careful with that. What I found is that the Brothersoft one is a direct download. So if you click Brothersoft, it should pop up into a uh, download folder on your computer. If you have that set up for your, your downloading, it may just go directly to your downloads folder. But uh, yeah, I find that this one is better than the other one. So you can see that it just came up um, as a save as box and in this what I've called new folder. So I can just save that and away you go. Assuming that doesn't happen, one thing you may notice is there's maybe a notice up here that says will you accept this download or whatever. If you, if you have security settings that are fairly high that may be one thing or it may stop it and, and not allow you to do it at all. So if you have to come down to do these, the uh, link again, this is the one that you're looking for. Look for the one that's got the downward arrow that's moving not any of these ads that say start download, nothing like that. So it can be a bit tricky. And I know people I've referred to Photoscape have ended up down, you know, wild goose chase, downloading all kinds of different things. And it can be a bit of a frustrating experience. So we just make sure that you do uh, grab the correct one. Okay. So once we have got the program, you do your typical, you know, it's a sort of an EXE file. You can see right there. Double click it get it set up and then you're basically presented with this program that looks like this. This is the main Photoscape page when you go into the program. The main thing that we're going to focus on in this video is the editor and this is the main tool that I use. There are a variety of different other cool tools here and I've used a couple of them. I've used the page I've played around with the animated GIF one and I may show those in an upcoming video. But in this particular video, I just want to show you the editor function. Okay, so this is where you can manipulate photos, you can change their size, you can create various graphics. And it's this is the main tool of Photoscape and, and what I love about Photoscape. So what I want to show you quickly in this particular video is how you can make a web friendly image that's essentially ready to upload to your website and use in a blog post or on a page or whatever. What I don't recommend you doing is taking a picture with your digital camera and then uploading it via WordPress, via the WordPress admin panel into your graphics folder. Because what you get outside, out of a camera is especially this day and age with these multi megapixel crazy cameras you get these huge files that are you know three four five gigabytes and sorry megabytes in size 
they're probably uh, 3,000 pixels times 2,000 pixels or something like that. Massive, massive images. And if you're not really all that familiar with this sort of stuff, it might be just natural to assume that you can upload them to your blog and just use them as is. And technically, you probably can. You know, WordPress makes it so easy to upload graphics and everything else that you can certainly upload them and then even modify the size of them so that they appear smaller but the fact is you've uploaded this massive file onto your server and that's going to take up space and it's really not needed the other thing about it is that you haven't done anything to sort of identify it as your own image and what I like to do is put watermarks on my own photos for um, for most of my sites anyway um, if it's something that's your personal photo, you don't want people to just grab it and, and use it for their own, uh, I recommend putting a watermark on it because then at least bare minimum, if they put it up on their site, other people can see that the watermark is for another website and you can see that it, it did come from somewhere else. So for starters, you, know, you can see my, uh, my size is already fairly small. I mean, on some websites, that would that would probably work just fine. You know, on my particular blogs, it's generally going to be a bit smaller than that in order to fit inside the width of a, a blog post uh, nicely. So what I will typically do is put it down to about 500. You're going to have to play around with this. It depends on your template, your theme, whatever you're using for your website, just so you can uh, figure out what works best. But 500 works well for me. So I put it down to 500. And next thing I want to do is is the watermark. So if you come over here, you can see object. And we'll look at some of these other ones in other videos. But for the time being, I'm going to focus on it's not a, it's not going to be a logo object. It's going to be a text-based object, a text-based watermark in this case. So you can see you enter the text here, and the last one to get used was redroomcomposting.com. So all the ones for that website, I always do that. You know, I have a, a certain font that I use every time, a certain set of settings, a bold, italics, underline. The opacity, I, this depends on, on the photo, if it's a dark or light photo. But I like to keep it sort of mid-range. If it's too bright, it, it, it distracts uh, reader attention. Obviously, it's too dark, it doesn't show up. So you just keep it sort of in between, somewhere in there. Whatever colors you want, whatever size. Uh, you can have an outline. I like to have an outline with a, a three thickness. Uh, shadow, if you wanted a shadow. And then the position. I usually use the position because that helps me standardize things. So, you know, somewhere one of the corners is almost always going to be the case. And you can see there's a light, light background. So you want to darken that a little bit. And then you can move it around however you want. And that's basically it. So you can put it, I mean, I probably wouldn't put it there. It might be over more of an open space somewhere up here. And th then you're basically ready to go. So what you can do now is the other great thing about this is that you can modify the size in terms of the, you know, kilobytes. So we obviously don't want something that's multiple megabytes in size. So by reducing it down to this size, that already is going to reduce the size quite a bit. So what you do is you save, and then save as. Let's come down here. I'm just going to give it a different name so it doesn't overwrite what I already had there. Sorry for these uh, weird sizing here. Uh, so then save. Now when you click save, it's going to give you this JPEG quality thing. And it doesn't have to be saved as a JPEG. JPEG is the sort of most common type of uh, graphic file type. But you can see, I can go all the way to 100%, 162.9 kilobytes, or all the way down to 70% and 34.9 kilobytes. I can honestly tell you that 70% is not bad looking is not a bad looking photo for any kind of a website so don't worry about getting it to 100 percent this is a great way to increase the load time of your graphics of your photos and you can play around with it experiment with it but it, in all honesty even if you go all the way to 70 percent 
you do not have to worry about it looking terrible on something like a blog post you know at at the 500 pixels in width or just sort of a small size in general if you have a massive photo and then somebody clicks on the full size of the photo then you know you may notice a bit more but basically uh, yeah so you can get you get your image you can see that's a much bigger different much big di <laughs> much smaller size than what would be coming off your camera and it's going to load faster you're not going to be taking up all the server space and that's definitely the way that you want to go alrighty so there's a variety of other things you can do with Photoscape obviously uh, I don't want to take up too too much time this video is fairly long as it is but that's sort of uh, the long and the short of it as far as using Photoscape to um, modify your, your images and add a watermark. Alright, so I hope you found this interesting and we'll certainly be talking about Photoscape again soon.